Hi, I'm Maggie. Welcome to Experiments in Crafting. The other day I was out shopping and I found this Bernat Mix Baby. Um, my initial reaction was not overly positive. Uh, it mostly looked like Bernat had taken all of the yarns that everybody hates and stuck them all together. But as I wandered around the store and thought about it some more, I realized that this might actually be a really nice yarn for making a lovey, which are those small blankets with an animal head or small animal in the center. And because this yarn has so many different textures, I thought it might make for a really nice uh, baby present. This yarn is a number five or bulky weight yarn. Um, Bernat says to use a six millimeter crochet hook, which is a J hook or a six millimeter uh, knitting needles, which is a US 10. Um, it's a blend of polyester, acrylic and nylon. Um, that means that it should be safely machine washable and dryable. I'm interested to see how this works up. I'm not sure how the yarn is attached to each other. Um, so that will be interesting to find out. And I am not sure how it's going to hold up in the washer and dryer, um, which is really important when you're making a baby item that it's easy to clean. Um, this fuzzy yarn may not hold up so well. Um, I suspect that the chainette style yarn will be just fine, but it's going to be interesting to see. I am going to work up a granny square style lovey, and then I am going to get a coordinating yarn um, in like a light yellow and make a little rubber ducky for the center. So when I get that all worked up, I will come back and I'll let you know my final thoughts on this yarn. It's been a couple of days and I've broken into that ball of Bernat Mix Baby yarn. I've made up two small projects. The first is a granny square lovey with a little rubber duck on top. And the second is a small corner to corner square. The Bernat Mix Baby yarn is four different textures. The first is a uh, soft yarn um, that's sort of loosely spun, but then they wrapped a uh, colored textured thread around it. Um, the next section is this, uh, again, a loosely spun yarn, very similar to a uh, Lion Brand homespun yarn, if you're familiar with that. Um, it's pretty difficult to see your stitches, but it's nice and fuzzy. Um, the third section is a yarn that's very similar to Bernat Pipsqueak. It might even be Bernat Pipsqueak, since this is a Bernat yarn. Um, it's a very fine yarn when you're holding it, but it's very fuzzy, and so it it works up just like a bulky yarn. And the fourth is this filled uh, chainette yarn. Um, it's sort of like a knit tube with stuffing, um, kind of similar to a hoodie string or a shoelace, but it's very soft and not uh, coarse at all or scratchy. The way the yarn is joined is that they've laid the two ends together and sewn across them. Um, it makes for a weird texture, but I don't know how else you would join such different yarns. Um, the joins seemed secure to me. Um, I didn't have much of a problem working them. They did feel a little bit weird just as you were working them. They're a little bit stiffer than the other yarn, but I've run my hands all over this blanket and I can't feel the transitions. I can find them um, if I really work at it by eye but they don't, they're not noticeably different texture once it's worked up in the project. So I don't think that that's a huge concern in the final project. Um, I chose a granny square pattern because when you work a granny square, you're working almost entirely into chain spaces. And what I mean by that is um, in between your sections of stitches, you put chains and then your next row is worked into that gap. This way you're not trying to work your stitches into the tops of the stitches from the last round. This makes it a lot easier to work with these yarns uh, that are so fuzzy and hard to see the tops of your stitches. With the blue yarn, it's no trouble to see the tops of your stitches. 
with this yarn where they've wrapped the contrasting thread around, um, it you can see your stitches pretty easily. Um, but when you get into this homespun and especially to the pipsqueak style yarn, um, it's nearly impossible to see the tops of your stitches. So I chose this pattern because it was the easiest uh, to work up. I also worked up a corner to corner square. Uh, the corner to corner, you also work primarily in chain spaces. Um, you do have, at the beginnings of the row, you have to work into uh, a small section of chains, but the rest is basically worked into chain spaces. And so it was a pretty easy uh, little square to work up. Um, the two different projects have a really different feel to them. So this corner to corner, all of the textures bunch together. And so you feel each different texture as you work your hands across. Um, the granny square, you sort of can feel all the different yarns anywhere you grab the blanket. I think either would be a great option for a baby gift. One of the drawbacks of this yarn is that it is a self-striping yarn and you don't get to choose where your uh, color changes happen. So in the case of this granny square, you can see that the blue rows are very obviously not complete. Um, when you hold the project up the way it's intended to be held, it doesn't, it's not really noticeable, but laid out like this, it's pretty clear that the color changes aren't where I would have chosen them to be. Um, with the yellow sections, it's not so noticeable, but that blue really does draw the eye uh, to the fact that the yarn was not long enough for the pattern. It's a little bit better in the corner to corner square, at least in my opinion. Um, I like that the blue bunches up um, into stripes. It doesn't go all the way across here. Um, and obviously if I got to choose where my color changes were, I would have made full stripes. But for the convenience of having a single ball um, and all these different textured yarns and not having to uh, cut your yarn and join and sew in all the ends, um, there's just the trade-off of not getting to choose where your color transitions happen. I did consider working this in just rows of double crochet uh, so that I could work the whole length of one texture in double crochets and then uh, turn and work back so that all of my rows were just one texture. I decided against this for two reasons. One, because I wasn't sure that the different textures would work up with the same gauge or even that they were the same length in the ball. Um, and two, because if I worked rows of double crochet, I would have to work into the top of stitches. And I think that would have been a lot less pleasant than working into uh, chain spaces. I was pretty hesitant when I bought this yarn because of how strange it is. But overall, I'm happy with how it turned out. It worked up very quickly. I was able to get two small projects out of just the one ball of yarn, and I think it would be a great uh, yarn for a last minute baby shower gift. Uh, if you're feeling adventurous, I suggest that you pick up a ball and give it a try. If you've got any questions about this yarn, or if you have an idea of a fun project using this yarn, leave me a comment below. If you like this video, hit subscribe so that you get notifications about future crafting videos. Thanks for watching.